Spring Valley, one of Washington's most exclusive communities, with stately mansions, manicured lawns, and munitions dumps. Underneath the perfect landscaping of this pristine neighborhood could lie some of the deadliest chemicals known to man. I don't even want to think that. I don't even try not to think that. We moved out of the house. I mean, you wake up at night thinking, good Lord. Danielle Furyan and Geza Teleki are two of thousands of people who may be living in a chemical graveyard, mm -hmm. a graveyard created 85 years ago when Spring Valley was remote farmland and America was at war. 1917, the Allies were losing, forcing the U.S. into the chemical weapons business. The American University Experimental Station began secret research, creating and testing deadly chemical agents Horrible things like skin blistering mustard gas and lewisite. George Temple's father was a human guinea pig. He wound up with six water blisters. More than 200 chemicals were tested here, weapons designed to kill thousands of people quickly and painfully. There was a few men that had gotten into some of this bad gas. The flesh was dropping off the bones of the victims. It's no wonder soldiers named the area Death Valley as they disposed of unwanted weapons by burying them. One sergeant wrote these chilling words on the back of this picture. The pit, the most feared and respected place in the grounds. The bottles are full of mustard to be destroyed here in Death Valley, the hole called Hades. You can see that hole called Hades right here, marked as a probable burial pit on an aerial photo taken in 1918. You can also see Hades today, right here on what is now Glenbrook Road. I think at this point there, we found uh, almost two dozen bottles that had chemicals, uh, chemical agent. And Hades is not the only poisonous pit. In 1993, on 52nd Court, the Army unearthed 141 munitions, some with fuses. Since then, more than 600 items were dug up by the Korean ambassador's home. Tons of toxic soil were hauled away from American University's campus, as well as the university president's home, and it doesn't end there. We're still looking for um, large cache of weapons that, that may still be buried somewhere in the general vicinity of Spring Valley. The Environmental Protection Agency's Terry Sloniker is worried about what hasn't been found still feel that we're, we haven't accounted for 4,000 weapons, that 4,000 pieces of munitions that were uh, in, the, in the inventory and um, have not been accounted for. Just for my peace of mind, I decided we should go. Danielle Furyan abandoned her Tyndall Street home in AU Park I last fall. That's when the Army gave in to community pressure and tested every property in the area for arsenic. Arsenic's a byproduct of chemical agents all the red spots on this map show where elevated arsenic levels popped up. The results were unexpected. Many areas, including parts of Tyndall Street, are contaminated. I mean, as soon as I found out, I just said, come and dig my yard out. And I have these two kids, and so I just said, come on and do it as fast as you can. No one bothered to check here before because the Army thought these buildings were just barracks. I could see where prior um, assumptions that we made uh, you know, had been proven either wrong or, you know, maybe we would make them differently now. Another property treated differently now is Geza Teleki's home on 48th Street. In the 1918 photograph, it looked like an old airstrip. Now it's an area of suspicion. And this is where there's one large item here. There's a second large item here, and the third item is right under here. Terry Sloniker has spent a decade analyzing photographs of the zone. He believes the worst may be yet to come, and it could be hidden under another suspicious area, Sedgwick Street. This is obvious scar sort of led us to wonder if that isn't a, a large barrel area where, where they maybe expanded the trench to, to put a lot of um, something in the ground. And something is here in the area now called Sedgwick Trench. The Army Corps of Engineers has detected elevated levels of arsenic in the soil here and significant metal objects underground. We still feel that, that there's a potential major um, health and safety risk out there and, and we have to investigate that fully. But is anyone getting sick? It depends on who you ask. I'm now much more concerned than I ever was before 
about health issues in the family. The D.C. Department of Health is only studying Spring Valley illnesses known to be caused by arsenic, lung, bladder, or skin cancer. And they say there is no evidence arsenic is causing those problems in the neighborhood. We have not seen those excesses in Spring Valley. Still, some neighbors are concerned about the hundreds of other chemicals that could be in the ground and the health effects they may have. No one from D.C. Health, no one from the Army, no one from any agency has made house calls in Spring Valley since 1993 to ask a single question about health issues from any of the 13,000 residents who've been living. I'd like to know why. Nancy Dudley worries about her parents' cancer deaths. She grew up on toxic land. I played in that arsenic-rich soil. I ate vegetables grown in it. Nancy grew up here on what is now the Korean ambassador's property, where those munitions were dug up. Next door at the current excavation site, a mother of two developed brain cancer. And behind them both is what was once the American University Child Development Center, built on top of extremely contaminated soil. Last year, D.C.'s health department said the children who once played here are not at risk. These children were not exposed to arsenic at any unusual level. But before this was a daycare, it was a small fraternity house. Alpha Tau Omega Brothers lived here unaware of the toxins underneath. Fox 5 has learned since then one brother died from skin cancer in his 20s, another had testicular cancer in his 30s. And in the houses that ring Cedric Trench, at least two people have died and four others were stricken with extremely rare blood cancers or blood diseases. Many of those disorders which were listed and of concern by those residents mean a lot to us, but we must base it on sound science. Danielle Furyan wants sound science that her home is safe. Safe in Spring Valley and the surrounding area will mean removing all the contaminated soil and digging up untold numbers of metal objects underground. It could take 10 years, and even that may not be enough. By that time, my child is going to be 16 years old. And if he's going to be contaminated, the job will have been done by then. I don't think there's anything really at this point that's going to make me completely have peace of mind. painful to breathe, painful to cough. Nancy Hanger's childhood was shadowed by illnesses. That's caused a lot of problems. It's, it's really changed my life. She suffers from lupus, kidney and stomach disease, and pernicious anemia, a disorder that prevents your body from making enough red blood cells. Only one in 10,000 people have it. I got considerably weak quickly. Camille Somm understands the pain of pernicious anemia. She too is suffering from it. My father had to carry me to the doctors, and at that time I had my first blood transfusion. And my sister has told me since that, Camille, when you left that day, I never thought you would be coming home again. These women have something else in common. They grew up in the same neighborhood, D.C.'s Spring Valley. What do you think about the people that are living there today? I'm very terrified for them terrified because of what may lie beneath the neighborhood. These homes on Sedgwick Street are built over an old army trench, one of several sites where chemical weapons were tested and possibly buried during World War I. Some say those chemicals are making people sick. I spent hours and hours and hours playing there. Nancy Hanger found out about her neighborhood's infamous past when she came across the Army Corps' website. She discovered the grounds where she grew up are contaminated with extremely high levels of arsenic. Arsenic's a leftover of those chemical weapons created long ago. Nancy's doctor believes arsenic caused her health problems. I said, what do you think? Could it be arsenic? Could I have been poisoned as a child? He goes, oh my God, 
That's it. It's the smoking gun. Nancy and Camille aren't the only ones getting sick. But my concern is all the people that had been living there. That's what I want to come out. This is Camille's childhood home, overlapping the Sedgwick Trench. It's where she developed pernicious anemia, and her sister got bladder, thyroid, and skin problems. Her neighbors suffered far worse. Three men around the trench died from multiple myeloma, a blood cancer that strikes only one in 25,000 people. An elderly man and a little girl died from aplastic anemia, a disease so rare, fewer than 1,000 Americans each year are diagnosed with it. Those two people who were not related lived in the same house, but years apart. Add to that this recent report linking aplastic anemia to arsenic exposure, and residents like Geza Teleki are wondering about the diseases appearing on their blocks. I'm right on this X here, the old airstrip. I'm now much more concerned than I ever was before about health issues in the family. Attorney Richard Lewis represents Camille Som. Clearly, there has been a public health hazard in this community. It was not fairly disclosed to anybody. Fox 5 has learned of several other illnesses in Spring Valley, all of them concentrated in areas where the Army tested chemical weapons during the First World War. Leukemias, autoimmune disorders, stomach, lung, breast and brain cancers, anemias, blood disorders and non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Residents want to know if these illnesses can be traced back to those chemical weapons. Former D.C. Health Director Dr. Ivan Walks. What do you tell those people? I think what we tell those people is that we have not stopped looking. The fact that we to date have not been able to find a link doesn't mean that there is not a link and it doesn't mean that we're going to just stop. The D.C. Department of Health did review the cancer registry for Spring Valley residents, but health officials only checked for five types of cancer linked to arsenic exposure. There are, in fact, over 220 toxins that were being used at the American University Experimental Station, most of which are not being tested for. Residents are equally alarmed that the cancer registry goes back only 15 years. That means people who grew up here and then moved away, like Camille and Nancy, were never counted. And it's not good enough to go out there in 2001 and ask the people who live there today uh, what illnesses they have and compare them to a different zip code. That is not a complete analysis. Equally incomplete, Lewis says, is the health department's efforts to contact people who are sick. Officials asked people to report their illnesses to a hotline. We found a number of residents who did just that, and the health department never called them back. It's a source of great frustration I, for those of us who have families with problems where we can't find anybody to talk to. Is there a reason why um, that information wasn't followed up on? I don't know that, and I need to find that out. If, if, um, if those people did call and they did not get a call back, and I certainly believe what you're telling me, then I need to get to the bottom of that. That's just one unanswered question, but several more still haunt Spring Valley. Residents are also upset they didn't find out about the chemical contamination until it was too late. Some of these illnesses could have been prevented. But we uncovered evidence that people who lived in Spring Valley could have been told about the problem years earlier. Up next. They knew and didn't tell anybody. Fox 5 uncovers mistakes, missteps, in a code of silence. Do you think that they were trying to hide something? Absolutely. Straight ahead, a controversial deal, a possible cover-up, and the investigation into buried secrets when Fox 5 News at 10 continues. As more secrets surface in Spring Valley, accusations swirl through stately neighborhoods and hallowed halls. They knew and didn't tell anybody. Alleging a conspiracy of silence at the highest levels of the U.S. Army and American University. They had a responsibility to their own neighbors to protect them from harm. Silence that may have jeopardized the health of thousands of families. Silence that started with a deal made at the end of World War I. 
The Army borrowed land from American University and other landowners to test chemical weapons. AU's Board of Trustees agreed to take its land back as is in exchange for 10 buildings. We now know as is meant with buried bombs and contaminated soil. David Taylor is special assistant to the president of American University. The Army gave it back and said, where's the campus and, and uh, good luck. The luck held out until 1986 when AU started building Bender Arena. The university became concerned about articles it found in its archives, stories about buried munitions, even the discovery of an unexploded bomb. That was enough to prompt us to contact the Army and the EPA to, to ask if they would uh, please assist us and come back and, and do a search. The Army analyzed these old aerial pictures. Experts identified two probable weapons burial sites, as well as several pits, trenches, and test plots. The Army admitted it could not disprove the possibility that some materials remain buried around the campus, but it decided no further action was necessary. They were of the mind that unless they actually found something, as far as they were concerned, uh, there wasn't a problem. So AU and the Army decided to keep everything, including that photo analysis, confidential. D.C. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton. Neither the District of Columbia nor residents were fully informed about uh, the extent of these mu munitions at a time when authorities clearly knew it. Attorney Richard Lewis represents some Spring Valley residents who are suing American University and the U.S. government. There is no justification for decades and decades of sticking one's head in the sand and hoping that the problem uh, wouldn't surface. But trouble did surface as this land that used to belong to American University was being developed and once again the signs were kept quiet. Few people know that the workers building this house in 1992 were getting sick. They had blisters and burns like these, the same kind caused by chemical weapons. And this was the scene in 1993, when construction workers actually dug up live bombs. That forced the Army to launch a two-year investigation, a search it claims turned up virtually nothing. This was the truck. But this man, Jeff Miskin, says he found plenty when he was working at the AU president's home and hit something with his truck. And I saw bottles. I saw old glass bottles, some of them with the tops wired shut and some of them that we had broken with the machine. A cloud of um, vapors came up and, and hit me in the face. Jeff says it made him sick. I went to the doctor and my, my face just blew up. First it was like a sunburn and then he said, these are, these are burns. Jeff notified AU. University officials had his truck quarantined and decontaminated, but told Jeff there was no reason to be concerned. I said, hey, if, if there's bad things in the truck, I said, what about me? And they said, oh, not to worry. No one ever contacted Jeff again. But American University did take immediate action that day, calling in a special environmental company to test the property and clean it up. This report shows some arsenic levels at the president's home were 60 times higher than what's considered safe. Crews hauled away tons of toxic soil, but when Miskin asked AU what was going on, he says he was told they were just changing the landscaping. Do you think that they were trying to hide something? Absolutely. And I'm angry. I'm angry that I, I was never told. I feel, um, I feel betrayed by the, these people. Miskin's accident is just one reason the D.C. Department of Health demanded a new search. We didn't think enough sampling had been done. There were concerns about uh, shells that had not been located, about um, ordnance in the ground. D.C. health officials issued a 50-point report, causing the Army to reopen its investigation. This time, the Army found a huge pit at the Korean ambassador's house, filled with mortar shells, chemical weapons, and lab equipment. And guess where it's located? Right next to the properties where Miskin and those construction workers were contaminated. Army officials admit they'd been looking in the wrong place. We had made a mistake in one of the points of interest and in, in where we located it on the ground. Um, and it was a, a difference of about 160 feet. Um, but it made a big difference. A big difference in the lives of thousands of people who live in Spring Valley. How could the Army make so many mistakes? 
Congress held hearings last July trying to get answers. There's already enough evidence from the hearings uh, that information was suppressed. Norton wants to know whether any laws were broken. We believe that the Justice Department, at the very least, is looking into the matter. Holding someone responsible would bring residents some satisfaction, but little relief. It's never going to go away. They're going to reassure us that they've solved all the problems. I'm never going to be able to come into my backyard again and grow a tomato or be sure that if I start digging a hole, I'm not going to have a problem.